Coming up on Studios America, you thought climate change itself was going to eliminate life as we know it on this planet? <laughs> Come on. It's the climate-based credit score you need to be worried about. I'll talk to Glenn Beck about that and his new special, Operation Choke Point 2.0, the climate credit score system. Oh, terrifying. And as always, jealousy is an ugly color. Joe Biden has slammed states like Texas who are reopening in the wake of the vaccine, calling it Neanderthal thinking. Pretty rich coming from the guy who old, who's basically old enough to date by smashing a girl over the head with a club. It's, it's his sort of era. Did you know you can watch this stupid little show completely free and at your convenience? If, if you'd like to do that, uh, you can go to studosamerica.com and get all the links to that and social media, everything. Also consider a Blaze TV subscription to help fight back against conservative censorship. Head to blazetv.com slash stew and enter the promo code stew because that's how they know you like this stupid show and you'll save 10 bucks. Well, the pressure from the media finally, finally seems to be getting to Andrew Cuomo as he appeared in public for the first time in a week to address the sexual harassment allegations against him. Let's weigh his statement on the truth barometer as we do Cuomo's apology. Well, you know, Andrew Cuomo is sorry, everybody. He apologizes. He's so super duper duper sorry. To be clear, he's not sorry that your grandma's dead. He's not sorry that he's been lying to the state of the country for months. He's not sorry for writing a book about leadership while people were dying. He's not sorry that he was caught importing COVID positive patients into nursing homes filled with the most vulnerable. And he's not sorry he covered that up for a year. He's not even sorry that he sold a freaking poster bragging about how wonderful his performance was and attacking other states with half his death total. And by the way, is Cuomo himself saying he did this terrible art, this crappy poster? He's, listen to this. I thought he was just selling someone else's dumb poster. But look at the quote. Over the past few years, I've done my own posters that capture that feeling. I did a new one for what we went through with COVID in the past tense. And I think the general shape is familiar to you. Uh, I did a new one. I've done my own posters. What does that mean? There's an awesome Washington Post piece from a few months back entitled, Andrew Cuomo is touting a new pandemic poster. Artists call it an incoherent mess. In it, there is a link to an artist uh, who says right here, if you see this, folks, somebody had a great time making the latest Andrew Cuomo COVID poster. But the COVID mountain poster is not mine. I painted the three prior posters, including this 2020 poster featured here. Thanks for all the inquiries and the appreciation for the poster art at large. (laughs) <laughs> so wait a minute. This guy is saying he was the artist of the posters, except for the last COVID disaster thing that they did. That was somebody else. Why is Cuomo saying he did the art? And why would anyone want to take credit for this abortion of a poster? I don't know. Anyway, I do have incredibly sad news for you. Apparently, when you go to click on the website to buy one of his amazing, humble COVID bragging posters, there is a tragic development The link now leads to a dead website. Oh, no. What a perfect metaphor for the Cuomo administration. Also, I have some other sad news. The very progressive poster artist we just mentioned for Governor Cuomo is now retweeting stories ripping Governor Cuomo for hypocritically requiring sexual harassment training while actually harassing women. Oh, when you've lost the artist for your own propaganda posters, who else could possibly be left? On that note, America's dumbest governor decided to grace us with his presence today. Here's a guy who normally spends more time in front of a camera than even Dr. Fauci. This time, he's, oh, he's taken an entire week 
to actually address new allegations coming from multiple women that Cuomo harassed them. Then, after blabbing through a press conference about vaccine passports, he actually decided to talk about the women who did not appreciate his hands and mouth all over them. But I want New Yorkers mm -hmm. to hear from me directly on this. Oh, I can't wait. First, I fully support a woman's right to come forward. Oh, do you? And I think it should be encouraged in every way. Why every, why every? I now understand mm -hmm. that I acted in a, way in a way that made people feel uncomfortable. Oh, you got it now, huh? It was unintentional. Was it? And I truly and deeply apologize for it. Do you, with your fake cry? I feel awful no you don't about it no and frankly, frankly i am embarrassed should be embarrassed by it for a lot of things and that's not easy to say mm -hmm. but that's the truth that's yeah, true but this is what i want you to know mm -hmm. and i want you to know this from me directly oh thank you i never touched anyone inappropriately <laughs> really i never touched anyone inappropriately. Mm. I never knew at the time that I was making anyone feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I never knew at the time I was making anyone feel uncomfortable. Yeah, you just said that. And I certainly never, ever meant to offend anyone mm -hmm. or hurt anyone. Oh, no or cause anyone any pain. No, not you. That is the last thing I would ever want to do. Mm -hmm. Causing people pain. That is not the last thing he'd ever do. He's done it to thousands of people over the past year, at least. Every time he speaks, his voice causes me physical pain. Now, there has been some good reporting in New York by local reporters on Cuomo more than I honestly would have expected. Though he's led his press conference with a softball question. The reporter asked about this photo. Uh, this is the guy, you know, he's, he's holding the hands on the face. This is the part of the interaction one of uh, Cuomo's many accusers complained about. Uh, she says he also put his hands on her bare back and asked to kiss her, made her uncomfortable. The reporter's question supplied Cuomo with a suggested answer to the charges that he's far too handsy. She said her question has to do with the pictures that have surfaced of you touching a woman. The reason I'm asking a question is I've I've seen I've also seen other pictures of you touching the faces of people all over the place, young and old, whatever. And I wonder what you make of those pictures. Such a nice, easy batting practice fastball delivery there. Here's how the at bat went. And you are right. You can find uh, hundreds of pictures mm -hmm. of me uh, making the same gesture with hundreds of people, women, men, children, etc. <laughs> Why look at uh, it? You can go find hundreds of pictures of me uh, kissing people. Mm -hmm. Uh, men, women, it is my usual and customary way of greeting. Oh. You know that because you've watched me for, uh, let's just say, uh, more years than we care to remember. Yeah, we're watching. By the way, it was my father's way of greeting people. You're oh. the governor of the state. Mm. You want people to feel comfortable. You want to reach out to them. The dad's fault. Uh, I... I do it. I kiss and hug uh, legislators. I was at an event in Queens the other day. Uh, hugged the pastors and the the uh, assembly members who were there. So that is my way to do that. However, However. what I also understand mm -hmm. is it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter my intent. Oh. Uh, what it matters is if anybody was offended by it. Actually, your t intent kind of is the problem here. If your intent wasn't always to make sweet, tender love to people who could be the sorority sister of your grandchildren, then perhaps people might overlook your advancements uh, as you kind of approach them in that oh-so-loving way. 
An innocent gesture that someone takes the wrong way should be able to be cleared up with a quick, oh, sorry about that. Cuomo, of course, deserves due process in this and in all matters, just like everyone else. But that doesn't make your skin crawl any less. With all these allegations and accusations combined with Cuomo's nursing home scandal, it's finally started to take a toll on his approval rating. In March 2020, Cuomo was at 71 percent approval. This was completely insane and wrong and probably should have cost New York its status as a U.S. state. But I digress. The new poll from Emerson has Cuomo dropping all the way down to 38 percent from 71 to 38 in a year. This is insanity. How can 38 percent of the population possibly still like him? That is way too high. Actually, 38 percent for a liberal in freaking New York is absolutely terrible. It's uh, it's way lo lower than even I thought. And I basically think he's Satan. The Emerson poll had some other good nuggets in it as well. Should Cuomo resign over these sexual harassment accusations? Yes, he should resign was 37 percent. No, he shouldn't. Thirty four percent. This is interesting. And I think it shows what we've been talking about. Politicians, particularly Democrats, see these allegations as a chance to sort of remove Cuomo. But it's really more about the nursing homes and so many other things. The media and the left can't admit that they got the nursing home thing wrong. So instead, they're saying it's about these sexual harassment allegations. But it's my theory that the people of New York are way more concerned about the way he's handled COVID than these new allegations that still have not been proven. And that seems to be true in this polling. When asked if Cuomo should resign over the nursing home scandal, 45 percent say yes. That's eight points higher than the sexual harassment scandal. Only 36 percent say he shouldn't resign over that. And when asked if they want a fourth Cuomo term or, you know, anybody else, 36 percent say they want Cuomo and an amazing 64 percent say they want someone else. You know, I originally had planned these for the upcoming recall for Gavin Newsom, but they will also work so well for Andrew Cuomo and for any governor who absolutely sucks as much as Cuomo does. It's a simple campaign T-shirt and mug. Anyone else for governor? You can grab one at stewdoesmerch.com. We just added it today. I think it's on the second page. Make sure you look for that. Hopefully, New Yorkers will get their wish. Though, knowing New York voters, they'll probably get someone even worse. Governor AOC? Anyone? Imagine how fun these shows would be if AOC was the governor of New York. <laughs> I, not, I'm sorry if you're in New York. You're probably not laughing as hard. If you're trying to buy or sell a home in these times, it can be challenging. Let's say you live in a state or you have a governor who's absolutely terrible. Uh, you just bought an anyone else for governor T-shirt. Well, maybe you should just freaking move. That's why you need a real estate agent who's going to come in and take charge, who can find the best home for you, who can get your home that you're selling fixed up and sell it to some sucker who's moving to New York or California. <laughs> yeah, come on in. Yeah, check out this house. It's a real deal right now. You're going to love it. Realestateagentsitrust.com is the place to go to find that person. Uh, you can know that uh, realestateagentsitrust.com is a company you can trust. It was started by our own Glenn Beck, who wanted to make sure people had a way to find the best real estate agent in their area, some way to screen through them, because I think right, basically we're just picking out of a hat at this point. Do I know someone who knows someone who knows someone? That's not a way to pick someone to manage your most important financial transaction. Realestateagentsitrust.com is the place to go to get more information. Realestateagentsitrust.com. My next guest is a Grammy-winning alternative artist whose hit singles Loser, The New Pollution, and E-Pro were all top of the charts at the time. Please welcome back to the program the one and only Beck. Be oh, no, yeah, we got yeah. the less talented one, didn't we? Uh, Glenn Beck is here. Glenn, welcome to the program. How are you? Good. Yeah. Uh, big special tonight, actually. This is a... It's an important one. Yeah, this is going into really our entire future and how it's... It's, it's, a, it's our financial future. Yeah. This is only the thing that you have to get your arm around on these specials uh, when we're talking about the Great Reset is these are just pieces. This is a big piece. Yeah. This is a big piece. Um, but it is your financial future. And... Uh, I will, uh, let me give you a quote. We're going to start the show with this uh, quote. 
uh, and I'll tell you exactly who um, who gave the quote here uh, <laughs> in uh, during the special. But uh, we will promote social justice policies to reduce inequalities, including through support to tax, redistributive and domestic resource optimization approaches, social safety nets and or insurance schemes, end quote. That so it, it's it's <clears throat> the control of the financial system to incentivize and punish good and bad behavior from their perspective. Yeah, let me tell you about Operation Choke Point. Operation Choke Point, um, we're going to tell you about tonight. We're not going to expose it. Nobody talked about it, but it was done to uh, go after those companies that were not. In fact, if, if I have the actual... I don't think I have the uh, actual, yeah, this is the quote from Operation Choke Point done under Obama. Freeze politically disfavored businesses out of the financial system. And so what they were mm. doing was they were taking the FDIC and saying, freeze this business out. It's not good for society. It's not good for green, whatever it is. Um, and the FDIC, through the banking sector, would say, no more loans to them, don't provide them banking services. These are not people that did anything illegal, not even immoral. They were just not politically correct for the administration. That was Operation Choke Point. That started in 2015. It was just a trial balloon, I really believe. That's what this is, except on a global scale. And it is already in place. 450 banks, the biggest banks in the world, are already in line and already, they already have all of the framework in. If you're not, if you're using too much electricity, mm -hmm. if uh, you Which are- Which I am. <laughs> yeah, if you have the depending on the size of your home, that's too big. If you have a business, mm -hmm. if you Little have uh, uh, lots of cars, whatever, everything is going to I'm be scared. is going to be scored. Yeah, your credit score is tied now directly to your your climate and social justice credit score. And this is your ESG score. Yes. So and environmental, social justice, and, and governance. governance. Yes. Jeez. So if you aren't playing by the rules um, that they dictate, mm -hmm. an end run around the Constitution, these private banks have all decided, these are, this, these are the things that we think are risky in today's world. We think, you know, not being climate friendly or social justice friendly, it's not a good bet. So we're not going to put our money at risk. Is this a little bit like the uh, old school, when we were up there, uh, restaurant system in New York, which requires, they have health inspectors that go in there and check these restaurants, and it requires you to post this grade on the front of your building, yeah. right? So like, and the thing is, they're not shutting down the businesses. They're just saying, here's the grade. Now, of course, if you're walking through New York, if it's not every single restaurant has an A, and if it doesn't have an A, yeah, all you're right. picturing are rats running over across your mm -hmm. pizza. Now, we can all agree that rats running across your pizza are bad, but these are political goals that yeah, are These are political different. goals. These are political goals that, you know when we had the cap and trade system where we yeah. were going we to trade carbon credits? Yep. The, the banks and, uh, and all of the corporations would lose. The government was the big winner there. This is different. This is the replacement. This one, the big corporations and the banks win. This one, they get the money mm. for being, you know, uh, with a high credit score for ESG. And they're setting all of the rules. So when you aren't a favored... Um, uh, nation, or if you will, a, a favored business, you won't just have to post an A. You won't be able to get credit. You won't be able to get credit card services. You won't be able to have banking services. You become almost, you become lower than the pot stores, okay, right, that right. can't put their money in a banking <laughs> right. system. Because it's not federally legal. Correct. So you become less than that. And if I try to have investors invest, if they invest, their credit score goes down. So 
the, the freedom to associate with each other comes with a very big penalty. You could, sure, you could go do that. Mm -hmm. But if you put your money in there, we now think you're a risk and you won't get money for your home loan. Mm. Well, because, you know, there's a, the founders designed the government with a with the checks and balances thing, right? There's a dance that goes on there, legislative, judicial and, and executive branches. The same sort of thing exists with capitalism, right? You have governments, obviously, a part of that. Mm -hmm. um, businesses are a part of that. And this in the consumers, citizens are part of that. And we all sort of push back against each other. Right? We're pushing back against the government. Don't take too much control. We're pushing back against companies. Don't charge us too much. Right. Companies are saying, don't take too much control of me from the government. And they're saying, don't say, uh, you know, I'm going to charge as much as I can to the consumer. And there's this dance that is constantly going on there. What it seems like with the Great Reset is the dance is, is realigned in which the business and the government are just one entity yes. working together against the consumer, yes. against the citizen. And it's, <clears throat> we become, I mean, it is a dystopian future. The, the science fiction writers in many ways were right. We become eaters consumers and workers. Our schools under this system become nothing but training camps for the businesses, all right? And they will decide, just like Common Core, the worst parts of Common Core that we told you about, we're gonna start sorting our kids for what jobs they're gonna have early on. Um, that's, that's part of this. So you are groomed to serve the corporation early uh, because it will help them. They'll have great jobs. But you are, you're slotted in your direction early in life because of the way they're scoring you, the way they're observing you in schools. Um, if you're going to be a bad kid, you're, you're a bad kid forever. Uh, there's no forgiveness in any of this. So you have the school, you have the purchases. It, you know, their goal is that no one will own anything by 2030. Well, I guarantee you, someone will own something. I mean, you just, uh, can we stop there for yeah. a second? The goal is to have no one own anything Correct. by 2030. It's 2021. I know that. Nine years from now. I'm, I'm going to start a mortgage. Speed. Breathtaking speed. This is coming. Breathtaking speed. So what happened? I'm, I'm in a private home. Mm -hmm. What happens to the, do I? Do I You're going to have to sell it because you are going to pay so much money for the tax on that home for the um, for the climate reasons right. or because of social justice reasons. I'll want to get out of it. You'll want to get out of it. They're going to make it so you want to get out of these things. Well, then who owns the home? Yeah. Or who, who buys it? The banks. The mm. banks own the home. The governments could own the home. Giant corporations can own the home. You know, I just saw something today. Ralph, Ralph Lauren just uh, started his um, his wardrobe exchange and it's for women and they can uh, you know rent a wardrobe from him for, it starts like 125 dollars a month and that's great because clothes they're always going out of style and so yeah rent you the wear it for a month yeah but situation. this is for your daily clothes right right okay mm -hmm. So the idea that you're going to own nothing is kind of appealing. You know, General Motors. Uber. The, yeah. Uh, General yeah. Motors, mm -hmm. the chairman of the board, was on our show, what, four years ago? And said, by 2030, we're not going to be making vehicles. We're going to be making fleets, okay? Because no one will own a pod. It's not really a car. It's more of a pod. And so they will own that. Well, th that's the point. They own it. The, the, there's going to be two classes of people, mm. the owners and the renters. Well, I don't want to rent my entire life. And I also don't want to be told that what I believe, what I do, or what I invest in um, stops me from being able to have a chance to grow. Yeah, because we've seen this already. We, we talk about Uber as an example of, you don't own a car, you just, just get a ride share. You just take it's a great. ride share. It's a great idea. We've seen people who are controversial get kicked off of services like Airbnb um, and uh, and Uber and, yes. and similar services. Can't rent. Because they can't rent. So now they can't own it and they can't rent it. That's a complete, you're getting to the point where you're deep. I will tell you, this is, I mean, I'm not saying that it is, but this is the system that is very much spelled out as a mark of the beast. You know, I'm not mm. saying it is, it's going to have the chip or whatever is going to yeah, be. In, right, but, but it is complete control 
of your financial future. If you are deemed uh, not politically correct, you have no chance. You're, you're, you can't buy food. You won't be able to get medicine. Medicine will be from the government. And if you're not doing exactly what they say, you're not going to get the medicine. Mm. You know, if and and the excuse is going to be, look, we're paying for it. Right. You know, if you're not going to stop smoking, if you're not going to eat green, stop eating meat, you know, which Bill Gates has come out and said, no meat for America, no meat for America. Well, if we're paying the bills and all the doctors agree, yeah. meat's bad for you. Go ahead, eat meat. But then your social credit score goes down so far. You can't get a loan. You can't get a job. You can't do anything. And you die because you can't get any medicine. Jesus, the Black Mirror episode. It really it is, is everything that's, I mean, it, it is. We really, I got to rewatch that under this. Cause, uh, well, it's why the, I mean, that was one of the last episodes that guy made. You know this? No. Yeah, Black Mirror is not making anymore because he said reality and what I saw as a dystopian future were merging. It, oh, what, everything I thought was dystopian is coming. Hmm. And he said, I can't do it anymore. Let me go back to the banking thing for a second here. Yeah. Because several years ago, you and I uh, both made a very insane investment that worked out to be the greatest thing we've ever done in our lives yes. uh, in investing in Bitcoin. Um, and it's been great. And my, my initial reason for investing in Bitcoin was, one, it was basically gambling. But two, um, I like the idea of something that had a, a possibility to fight against inflation, right? Like, there's 21 million of them. Can't get any more than that ever. When we're printing trillions and trillions of dollars, this mm -hmm. is a fixed supply. Like, it, there's a good argument that it's going to go up. And in addition to that, I saw real potential for, you know, people in Venezuela, right, who, who are getting crushed by their government to be able to still have an economy outside of the realm of control of a Hugo Chavez or right. whoever else takes over. Um, but now speaking about this, I mean, it is, it, it is, is cryptocurrency the type of thing that can actually get around this system, not You'd for just Venezuelans, but for Americans? You'd have to have places that would take cryptocurrency. Yeah. You know, your average store is not going to take Bitcoin if the government says don't, don't take, take Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Same with gold. Same with anything. Yep. You know, there will be people. I, I, I urge people to start thinking like people did in Europe in the 1930s. What will have value? There will always be somebody that takes gold because they know the world in its insanity will return to that. There is always somebody who will buy art or trade for art because they know great art will eventually return. Um, that's what people did in Germany. And I, I am afraid that's where we're headed into that kind of thing. Cause, but, it, but it has a happy ending in a way. <laughs> does it? it? It does in a way, mm. in a way. Um, big governments, all they do is create bubbles. Every time, whether it's the automobile, the Zill, mm -hmm. whatever it is, they create something that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And then when it doesn't work, they create something bigger that doesn't work. Yep. We're at the end now. We're at the money bubble, the everything bubble. So when everything pops, it will fall into this, which is an even bigger system. OK, this is a global system. You don't think it works at the federal level? <laughs> Try it at a global level. It will disintegrate. It will pop. But how long does it take? And how what long we have does to go it take to get there? Yeah. Well, some of those questions, the very beginnings of this, we're trying to be, uh, build this piece by piece because it's, it's such a complicated thing. It's something, you know, Justin Haskins, I know he's on the show yesterday yeah. with you. Um, he's co-writing a book with me on this. And we're having to rewrite much of it that we started writing it months ago because of new information and new understandings. This is so well formed and designed. And we're now just starting to get our arms around it. We're like, wait, 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 this is different and bigger. It's not about socialism. Mm. It's mm. about an oligarchy. Terrifying stuff. Uh, Glenn Beck, his new special is Operation Choke Point 2.0. 
Uh, the Climate Credit Score System. It premieres immediately after this program at 9 p.m. Eastern. The best way of watch to watch it, of course, is with a Blaze TV subscription. Head to blazetv.com slash stew. Enter the promo code stew because that's how they know you like this stupid show. And you'll save 10 bucks. I don't know if you want people to know that you like this stupid show. I know. With what's coming. I know. But at least you'll save the 10 bucks. That we can guarantee. <laughs> uh, back in a second. Thanks, Glenn. Thank you. Joseph Robinette Biden, our uh, current president of the United States, is saying that Texas opening up its businesses to 100 percent and getting rid of the mask mandate uh, is a big mistake. He said the last thing we need is Neanderthal thinking. Let's carry some extra weight from Joe Biden as he is the first president of the United States born in the Neanderthal era. Uh, so he kind of has some familiarity. Uh, with that, uh, you know, again, we've gone over this before. Go back and watch the stupid mask show we did a few weeks ago. Uh, there's really just no evidence these things do much of anything. Uh, not, not to say that masks have no effect, but mask mandates really don't seem to have much of an effect. It's about what people do. And you can't have the government coming in and bossing people around. It just doesn't work. Um, I will say this, though, and this is something that you should take to heart. I want you to internalize this for a second. Next Wednesday, this state is going to be open 100%. There's things I like about that, right? Movie theaters, maybe some concerts will start up again. I already had COVID, so none of this stuff bothers me. <laughs> I can go wherever I want and not worry about it. Um, a lot of people are getting vaccinated. I'm not surprised we're opening up. I think it's the right thing to do. I will say, however, um, I don't want any of you coming back to work. Okay? This is just a thing. I want you to understand this. Uh, you know, us, uh, how, how should I say this? Us essential people don't need you non-essentials on the road with us. We've been skating into work with no traffic for months and months and months and months. Where were you? I don't know. I don't care. You're sitting at home. You weren't in front of me. You know, when I go to a drive-thru, there's like only two people there. You know why? Because it's not people like you non-essentials getting in the lane and filling it up. So I got to wait for 15 minutes. Okay. I don't want that anymore. This is our state now. Okay? You don't, it's not you. You don't, you don't have any ownership over this anymore. This is ours. We've been the one with essential jobs like this, important essential jobs like internet shows. That's the people who are now owning this state and the whole country. You non-essentials, you stay home. This is our thing now. Get out of my way at the drive-thru. Just a little safety trip tip uh, for you there. Um, I will say uh, $1,400 going to a lot of people uh, in the country in this new bill. Uh, obviously, the House has pa passed the $1.9 trillion thing. It's going to get adjusted a little bit in the Senate, probably made a little bit more moderate so that Joe Manchin will uh, act like he has some conservative credentials with the, the voters of West Virginia. They're now saying they're going to adjust it down to maybe instead of people getting up to $200,000 in income, it might be only $160,000 in income for a combined family or uh, down to something like uh, $75,000 dollars a year if you're a single person. Uh, we'll give you the details of that as it passes. Uh, Kamala Harris uh, is out in the news as well. It, one of the things that's been interesting, we had this Dr. Seuss story that passed. And you know, people, they, they, the left always mocks this stuff. They're like, oh, come on, Dr. Seuss, really? Really, Dr. Seuss? Are they banning Dr. Seuss? And look, they're not banning it. Obviously, a private company has the right to print or not print whatever they want. We can't we have no right to tell the people who run Dr. Seuss's company, oh, you have to print that book. That's not the way this works. This is America. They get to do what they want to do with their own intellectual material. That being said, it is a, a very visible way of explaining what cancel culture is, and it's happening to so many people. Go back and look at the stuff we were talking about with Chris Rufo just a few minutes ago. They're teaching educators in Arizona that three-month-old babies are racists, and you need to tell them not to be racist. I don't think they can understand you, frankly. Um, but uh, the Dr. Seuss thing has happened so fast that now Dr. Seuss is a racist. Everyone lo loved Dr. Seuss. Barack Obama was doing Dr. Seuss reading days. Here's Kamala Harris from 2017. Happy birthday, Dr. Seuss. The more that you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places you'll go. Aww. <sighs> it's just a bizarre, bizarre thing. And I want to hit one more thing before we get out of this Dr. Seuss thing and hopefully leave this behind forevermore. Have you noticed they stopped printing these books because of quote-unquote racist images within the books? And what I'm trying to understand is what were these images, right? Like, I mean, I read Dr. Seuss books as a kid. I read them to my kids. I haven't seen any racist images. 
And if you've noticed, all of the news coverage about these has not shown you the racist images. And it's my belief that they're not putting them in there because they're offensive, which it's like it's like this whole, you know, the the scandal with Do, uh, Donald McNeil at, uh, at The New York Times uh, that when he used the N word on a trip when they were trying to discuss whether the N word was ever appropriate to use. He was, he was asked a question about that and he repeated the word at some level. When you stop saying the things that are being debated, you can't understand what the debate's about. How can we say if Dr. Seuss is right or wrong if we haven't seen any of these photos? We were able, or drawings. We were able to find one of the drawings. Here it is. Now, it is not, uh, it's not the type of drawing that you would make today. And in fact, it's already been altered once before uh, for these sorts of concerns. Uh, if you're listening on podcast, it is, uh, an, I guess, an Asian dude uh, in sort of traditional uh, old school Asian dress. And he appears to be maybe eating rice with chopsticks. You know, I mean, I don't think kids are going to turn into anti-racist, uh, mo- uh, you know, uh, haters because of a drawing like that. But I mean, if you wanted to adjust that a little bit, I mean, freaking Star Wars changes every time I see it. They add a new character. They got more digital creepy things moving along. You could change the one drawing to not print the book in its entirety because of a couple dumb drawings seems ridiculous. And honestly, like, are we not at the point where we can just sit back and say, look, this is this is, yes, it's a little bit of a relic from an earlier time. There were times where standards were different. If you don't tell kids and adults what the old standards were, how are they going to know to avoid them in the future? It's important if you think you're moving on from some decision that was bad in the past, that people are aware of what the decision was so you don't repeat it again. This is how we're supposed to learn and advance as a society. Instead, they're just taking these things and ripping them out of the news stories. I can't tell you how many news stories I read where it's about somebody, usually on social media, who said something offensive, but it was offensive and it's so offensive they won't put it in the news article. How am I supposed to judge whether it's fair or not? Whether this person is now a bad person or not? Am I just supposed to take Twitter's word for it? This is not a healthy way to advance a society. We need to think about these things. We need to be adults about these things, even when it comes to children's books. Look, all these social media services and free email services like Gmail and Yahoo are, are not free. They are, you're paying for them with your privacy. You're kind of the product here. Uh, and since those companies have access to every email you send and receive, big tech can sell your data to the highest bidder. That's why you got to trust Startmail to secure your email. Startmail keeps your email private, period. Every email is encrypted. Even if the recipient doesn't use encryption, you could still get your emails encrypted with Startmail. With Startmail, deleted means, get this, deleted. It's a crazy concept. When you delete an email, uh, it's gone forever. And Startmail uses their own servers, not Amazon's, which means they can't be put out of business like Parler. Uh, it's, 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 they, they've got this whole thing with, uh, with privacy in mind, and it's all built from the ground up. Uh, and is backed by some of the most stringent privacy laws in the world. Start securing your email privacy with Startmail. Sign up today. You'll get 50% off your first year. Go to startmail.com slash stew. Startmail.com slash stew. S-T-A-R-T mail.com slash stew. I'd ask you to, I don't know, use the slash stew part of the address because that's how they know you like this stupid show. Plus, 50% off your first year. Startmail.com slash stew. So are you familiar with uh, Bill Burr? He's a comedian. He has been in a bunch of stuff acting wise, uh, but he uh, was in uh, The Mandalorian or has been in The Mandalorian the last couple of seasons. I say was in because in my head he's already been fired for what I'm about to tell you about. Um, But if you remember the whole Gina Carano scandal, um, which really to call it a scandal is ridiculous. The thing that makes it a scandal is they took away her livelihood over nothing. She tweeted a picture of someone from uh, Nazi Germany era uh, and said, you know, Nazis basically turned regular people against the Jews before the soldiers really even were against the Jews. And, you know, you can go back and forth on history on that. The the bottom line is the, the concept is generally true in that, like, the German people were not 
innocent in this. They very much hated the Jews for very many reasons, and it allowed them to overlook a lot of really terrible things that happened. Uh, now, comparing that era to today, which she didn't explicitly do, she did uh, sort of, uh, you know, um, I think understandably uh, make a point that kind of alluded to that. Anyway, she got fired. And Bill Burr, who's also on the show with her, came out and uh, discussed the uh, uh, comment on the Bill Burt podcast with Bill, uh, what is it, Burt Kreischer? Is that his name? I've seen his comedy before. He's really funny. Uh, she was an absolute sweetheart talking about Gina Carano. Super nice effing person. And you know what? And whatever, somehow someone will take this video and effing make me say something else and try to get rid of my bald action figure. He's a bald guy. Uh, <laughs> not a lot of bald action figures, really. Um, I'm on that effing show. Now I got to watch what the F I say. Burr continued, how do you hold up judging someone that harshly? I'm not talking about the hardcore stuff like sexual assault and rape. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about that. It's becoming like, hey, you made an ignorant comparison. There goes your dream. And I look at that and said, who the F stands up to that? Another guest on the show says, I get what she was trying to say. Obviously, any comparison to anything in the Holocaust is a shoddy comparison. A dumb thing to do. I'm not disagreeing with any of that. However, how is it any different from all the people on the left when Trump got elected and they said, He's like Hitler. How is that any different? Yeah, how is it like any different? Like the other co-star on the show who basically said Trump was like Hitler in a tweet that almost exactly was the same, except there was a lot more errors in it. Uh, when you say it from the left, I guess it's okay. When you say it from the right, it's not. Um, I don't know. Can he survive this? Bill Burr has said, I guarantee things much, much worse than Gina Carano or anybody else has said. They'll probably dig those out now and his dream as well. Oh, I'm so glad to talk to you about Brooker's Founding Flavors. These guys make super mega nuclear premium ice cream. The best ice cream you've ever had in your life. Brookings Founding Flavors ice cream delivers the ice cream you love with a historical twist. These are people who don't, you know, they, 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 they're conservatives. They love, they love the country. They love our history. During the month of March, they've got the Guns of Boston flavor, which has chunks of Little Debbie oatmeal cream pie in it. Oh, my gosh. I can't even do these commercials without my mouth watering. Uh, I mean, this is fantastic. It celebrates Evacuation Day when the British were forced out of Boston during the Revolutionary War. Uh, no month would, uh, uh, of March would be a complete without the St. Patrick's Day flavor. This magically delicious ice cream has mint Oreo cookies. Oh, my gosh. Chocolate chip brownies, Andy's mints, all blended into one very lucky scoop of ice cream. This is premium stuff. You're going to freaking love it. Treat yourself with something like this. Brooker's Founding Flavor. Uh, go to their website, brookersicecream.com. Click on Ship Nationwide. That's how you'll know. Uh, you get it shipped to you wherever you are. Brookersicecream.com. Ship Nationwide. You will not regret this. Are you in New York? Does your governor suck? Are you in California? Does your governor suck? Michigan, uh, no matter where you are, you may very well have a governor that sucks. There's a few exceptions to that, thankfully. Uh, but if you have a governor that sucks, you probably need this T-shirt, especially if you're in California getting ready for the recall. Get this before the recall actually kicks into full gear. Uh, it's a brand new T-shirt from StuDoesMerch.com. It says, anyone else for governor? Anyone else? Please, anyone else for governor. Now, you could wear uh, clothing like that, and I could understand you'd be pretty cool around your neighborhood. But why not also get yourself the Sneecher? The Sneecher, of course, as we all know, is the only way to protect your feet. Here's a picture of it. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. It is a bio shoe with a, uh, I guess, mushroom sole. So you're walking on mushrooms all day. I mean, if that doesn't sound comfortable, I don't know what does. And uh, the, the actual body of the shoe is knitted canine hair. So you'll have dog hair all over your feet and mushrooms below your feet. What better way to hook up with that lovely someone you've been trying to get with for such a long time? Put some mushrooms and dog hair on your feet and... How could you be any more attractive? Um, I mean, you could wear anything else. That's one way of being more attractive. Or you could wear the stupid mushroom dog thing. We'll see you tomorrow.